Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and droids, across my newly formed empire. It's great to be in the empire today. Let me tell you, but speaking of empire, we're going to talk about the latest Imperial Galactic Legend, Lord Vader. And more specifically, we got to talk about the ultimate ability on him end of the Galactic Republic. Now, I myself am still a little bit away from getting the altar another two days or so i should have the altar unlock over a lot of you guys want to see end of the galactic republic in action and especially lord vader has not really seemed to be a very impactful or even a hype galactic legend post release we're not really hearing much about him and we're going to talk about how his initial impact in game talk about that ultimate gameplay and furthermore a problem that i'm starting to have with this theme of future galactic legends with gary you're right before we talk about all that we're going to talk about that sponsor larry hit it hey kid Come here. Do you like free to play hero collector games that have amazing graphics, hundreds of characters to collect, millions of players? Well then let me introduce you to our sponsor today, Raid Shadow Legends. Feel free to use the links down below in the video description to download the game and get some awesome new play rewards. I thought we'd take some time to talk about the orcs. While they were created by the Dark Lord, Seroth, they have a really good reason to not like humans. After a brutal war fought against the Banner Lords, High Elves, and Sacred Order, their lands were annexed forcing most orc clans to become nomadic. Now they're mostly just trying to survive. And if you want to find out more, you got to play the campaign to learn the full story. And while you feast your eyes on these characters, let me tell you what Raid Shadow Legends has been up to. This month of September, Raid has just released a huge new Doom Tower update with two new bosses to take on and more importantly, new artifact sets to win. And if that's not enough, the whole month is packed with super awesome events and tournaments including one very special event with a brand new feature super raids super raids lets you double up your rewards from hitting dungeons and massively speed up your progress i have another great champion that you can get for free if you scan my qr code or go to the links down below in the video description and if you're a new player you'll be getting an epic hero chanaru 200 000 silver one xp booster one energy refill and one ancient shard all this treasure will be waiting for you right up here but you gotta be quick because these rewards are only available for the next 30 days and speaking of quick let's just go ahead and start showcasing the gameplay for you all right now so before we talk about lord vader's seemingly initial impact maybe even lack thereof of an impact so far let's talk about this ultimate really since that is why we are gathered here today in our empire end of the galactic republic this is definitely a character that seems like he's really going to need that ultimate whereas with master kenobi he was really good out the box without commander title and even great pre ultimate he was getting a lot of use out of for example going up against supreme leader kyle ren sith eternals even raid teams out there big deal with master kenobi however and the galactic republic let's remind you how it works there's two tiers of ultimates which by the way compare how quickly kenobi gets the ultimate versus uh lord vader himself so two tiers of ultimate charge you can either go to 65 percent minimum or ideally you really want to wait till you get a hundred percent so we're going to just regurgitate what this alter does real quick so ultimate charge remind you how it works lord vader is getting ultimate charge when he uses dark harbinger or like we like to call it the dark hamburger and when debuff dark side allies receive damage he's getting two percent ult charge and three percent if that ally was an unaligned forces are all right so that lays the foundation of how we build up to it which is a it seems to be a little bit more difficult than kenobi kenobi's ultimate charge up very very quickly and but note by the way we're showing you that he can stay competitive up against master kenobi without commander sokatano commander sokatano makes things a little bit more complicated as we're going to talk about in a moment so when you get the 65 percent ultimate charge lord vader is going to be getting 50 percent of the other dark side allies current mastery which is stacking until the end of the encounter and then they're gonna lose that much however if their empire and dark side unaligned forces or allies they don't lose mastery from this ability so if you want to make sure your team doesn't automatically immediately crumble from lord vader's power draining that he's doing you're really gonna want to stick to the empire and unaligned forces which as of now there has been really an incentive to go beyond dark side unaligned force user and empire for the most part but of course as theory crafted progresses in the near future of course we might find lamps that look cool without dark side uh, unlike forces or empire but you might keep in mind if you bring in night sisters for example it's gonna really cripple your sisters for example but you really want to wait until you get to 100 percent ultimate charge because lord vader instead is gonna get 75 mastery 
from this ability instead of the 50 percent and he's going to dispel all the debuffs on himself take a bonus turn reduce his cooldowns by one and then he gains what's really important the ashes of the republic for five turns which is kind of like kenobi's high ground operates differently but in essence that's how you're going to get it it's a locked buff or status effect for a couple of turns which can't be dispelled or prevents it and the biggest kicker is lori vader's abilities they gain additional effects and enemies defeated while this is active can't be revived so you can't do revive teeth and lori vader even more importantly so is immune to ability block healing minutes and shocks and can't gain ultra charge very much so like Kagura. ability blocks healing minutes are kind of the bane of a pre-ultimate lori vader he can't get health back especially against master kenobi healing when he's really gonna suck up against him and the ability blocks really hinder him from using his other abilities pre-ultimate and to remind you what happens with vindictive storm if you get 100 percent ultra charge he's gonna deal extra damage again on the basic attack dark car uh hamburger his first all his first special ability is gonna also deal true damage so you're gonna put out more damage out there unshackled emotions is gonna allow him to get the unresistible undispellable ability block which is huge against any team the ratings master Kobe, there's no way they cleanse up and more importantly increasing the target enemy's cooldowns by two that's pretty much the main stuff that we're missing here. but really at the end of the day the most important thing for me especially when you're seeing from the gameplay check out the video from the other day when we show pre-ultimate lord vader he doesn't really hit for an absurd amount of damage before the ultimate ability but once you get to the ultimate a lot of your attacks are doing more damage doing true damage and just the fact that he's basically using all these dark side unaligned force users and imperials as his batteries to charge him up then he starts becoming a little bit different the beast and the damage starts to kind of up the ante a little bit but as you're seeing with the ultimate he seems pretty semi-comparative to things like Sith Eternal, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren's Ray, more importantly, he's really good up against Ray, even before the ultimate, and even non Commander Ahsoka Tano, Kenobi lineups. However, let's start talking about the initial impact of Lori Vader. I have several people in my shard, Arena Shard, that has Lori Vader, my, my, myself included, but no one wants to place him on defense. He doesn't seem to hold well as of now on defense. And you really need that ultimate to get that extra little damage on him, especially against those Master Luke battles. It really seems like you need an ultimate Lord Vader to make it happen. But secondly, the Commander Ahsoka Tano variant with Kenobi seems to be fairly difficult out the gate for him to handle. And I think this will get rectified with Maul. But as of now, we're not really seeing Lord Vader make an immediate impact in the meta. And I think the problem is the reason why we haven't really heard much about him it's because Master Kenobi Commander Ahsoka Tano is so dang good. And it's starting to seem like, this is the controversial part, it's starting to seem like these Galactic Ledges moving forward are needing a second half. So after you spend months and months and months, maybe even years, lots of money to get Lori Vader, yeah, he's good. He's able to compete with uh, a lot of the stuff out there. It does seem like he has to go through the uphill battle to make it happen, to get the win for you. But it really seems like to take him to the next level, you're going to need Maul. And especially with all these conquest changes, very controversial. I just got my max crate as of today. It was one of the most miserable experiences I've ever had. It really feels like you're being penalized with this, these newer galactic legends that they might not be as amazing out the box. It's like, oh wait, you're missing the second half out there, which is gonna be Maul. So it's a bit controversial. I would love to hear your guys think. Do you like this whole thing with releasing Galactic Legends and then you need a second piece of the puzzle? I much preferred Master Kenobi. I'm gonna say this outright. I was a lot more hyped for Lord Vader. <sighs> However, Master Kenobi just felt a lot better out the box, pre-Ultimate, with Ultimate, and with Commander Sogatan. That was literally the cherry on top of the Imperial Sunday ice cream right there. Lord Vader. I'm not a fan of him pre-ultimate. I really haven't used him except the occasional conquest and the goof around against certain teams in arena. But it doesn't seem like as of now, he's making an immediate impact. And it might be because he just doesn't, the team he's using right now doesn't really seem to be as ideal. When you think of General, uh, Jedi Master Kenobi, you're thinking of Commander Sokotano. You're thinking of General Anakin Skywalker. You're thinking of General Kenobi. You're thinking of Kiati Mundi, Sokotano, some very top tier characters. Whereas of Lord Vader, it might not be so much a problem with him because it really just seems like you just got to sit there. It's a different play style than Kenobi and other Galactic Legends. I guess maybe it's sort of mimics Sith Eternal where you kind of got to sit back for a while, hit the alt, and then all right, it's game time. Lord Vader is definitely a slower paced Galactic Legend. You got to build up that ultimate 
and get there. But when you look at the rest of the team, it's a bunch of weird guys. Uh, for example, D Wall and people are watching D Wall footage at this very moment. It seems like we might be progressing towards a Lord Vader team that just relies on a very tanky team, putting in Stormtrooper. Yeah, Gary, you actually might be in part. We're going to look into that a little bit more. Throwing in your Royal Garden as we were. I've even seen some gameplay with Sherry the Shore Trooper in the third slot. And heck, maybe even one more tank, a Kylo Ren on mass or throw in Darth Vader inside that fourth slot. Just so you buy as much time for Lord Vader to get to his all to his death and then siphon a ton of mastery from his entire team. So it's a, it might just be it's a different play style. It might take some time, but I think it's definitely evident. Lord Vader is not, as of now, an amazing out of the box experience, it seems like. It might take a couple more weeks, might take a few more months, to get the meta thing situated. For example, set the turn on. It took a while to find the ideal team, which was just set the turn on Watt Tambor, that eventually armor came into the mix. Whereas initially we were th we were doing set the turn with the Sith Triumvirate or Darth Revan. It might take some time, but I just gotta say from a personal experience and just kind of gauging the meta reports, gauging the community interactions and opinions on this character. Out of all the Galactic Legends, I definitely feel like this is the least talk about Galactic Legend. It's kind of weird you think this would be one of the most anticipated Galactic Legends. Maybe that's just me and my prequel bias, but definitely a character. Even with that ultimate, yeah, he's doing stuff, but he just doesn't quite feel like a wow factor as of now. And it might just be we got to wait for Maul to come around, but I'm not sure how I feel about the fact that Galactic Legends might start needing another half to them. It's great to see that they're getting another addition to help them get the top tier stats. And it's looking like Lord Vader and Maul, they're going to be absolutely amazing. But until then, it's a little bit of a bummer seeing how Lord Vader is performing in my opinion. But that is just an opinion of an Imperial right here. We'll have to wait and see. Times will change, but I think it's just as of now as the video is being recorded at this moment. It seems like the people I'm talking to, the people that are giving me feedback on my Lord Vader, I talk to D-Wall and Pimpo. They have plenty of people using Lord Vader, but they just don't want to leave it on defense, and they're not really using it on the climb because Kenobi and Commander Sokotano really have a big edge over Lord Vader before Maul starts getting into the picture. So this might be a character for the moment. Maybe it's interesting on defense. You throw in Lord Vader, throw in a super tanky team. It could be a timeout team. Again, we are not saying that Lord Vader is absolute trash. He is still a galactic legend, but it's kind of give me vibes. Like Sith the Turtle and Jedi Master Luke were out the gate. Mm, it's not as crazy as Rey, Supreme Leader Kylo, or Jedi Master Kenobi were out the gate. But time will tell. Lord Vader, it's still great to see him inside of Star Wars Galaxy Heroes, but I'm just not feeling that initial hype or that initial wow factor with uh, Lord Vader himself. But time will tell. I will start doing my own gameplay in a couple days here. We're at 9 out of 12 for the ultimate ability. And I'm hoping there's a lot more to the story. And I think it might just be we're needing Maul. So when something goes wrong, who do you call? Better call Maul, everybody. Like, comment down below. And all your thoughts, a lot of interesting stuff. How was your initial impressions of Lord Vader? Have you fought him? Have you seen some gameplay? What's your opinion? Would love to hear. And how are your thoughts in regards to getting these building blocks a second you need this extra part the malik to the galactic legend remember when darth revan came out it was darth revan he was all right but then you need the malik aspect to really take him to the next level time will tell thanks for stopping by the biggest and deadliest star destroyer home of the kyber club which is open 25 8 for one extra one extra day of partying hard i'll catch you guys in the next video but until then always remember it's great to be in the empire today